The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 223. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey of self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a model, a host, and a DJ, and she also was the Miss Bini Bini Filipinas 2015. And I'm just really honored to have her on and share her story with us. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Christy McGarry. Christy, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, Sheena. Yep. Uh, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be on this show, to talking to all of you. So uh, my name is Christy McGarry. Um, I was born in Jersey City, in New Jersey. I've lived and studied in New York City for a couple of years. I've been modeling in and out of the Philippines for the past five years, but I've made it my permanent home for the past two years after deciding to join Bini Bini Filipinas. And uh, Bini Bini Filipinas translates to those of you who don't know. It means Miss Philippines. Also, for those of you who don't know, we take pageants, pageantry very seriously in my country. The winners are considered icons, and uh, they're a major source of inspiration for our nation. And after winning a Miss Philippines title and a crown, and afterwards finishing first runner-up in my international competition, uh, I really learned the importance of, of charity and, and for promoting self-confidence. Uh, for me, it's the most rewarding part of my job. So after passing my crown this past April, I've also continued my career as a, like you said, model, host, and DJ. And I've been a firm promoter of female empowerment. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that, Christy. And what's your cultural background? Uh, so I'm a dual citizen. I'm a Filipina-American. I was born in the United States, and my mom is full Filipina. She was born in Nabwa, Camarino Sor, Bicol, which is a, a province in the Philippines. And my father is half Filipino. He's half Irish and half Filipino. So my grandfather was the Irish side, and that's why my last name is McGarry. So that makes me 75% Filipina and a quarter Irish. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that tidbit. And Christy, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? A favorite one is kind of hard to narrow down. I've got a few, actually. So... Uh, one would be, uh, don't be a lady, be a legend. That's uh, something Stevie Nicks said. I've always been a really big fan of Stevie Nicks. Uh, she represents the feminine mystique, and she's very sensitive, and she's creative and mystical, but she's also still very strong and daring and empowering and, and very rock and roll. So she really embodies who she is and her personal identity, and she has a confidence that have, has always inspired me. And I think this quote is just a reminder to always strive to be better and to strive to be great and to never settle for less. Another quote would be by Coco Chanel. She said once, beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. And I mean, she alone is already inspiring. She's such a, a strong, timeless, and iconic woman. And I've learned through this quote that despite the misconceptions and doubts um, that I can become a beauty queen because I was such a tomboy that I could still do it, and being the tomboy I am today and always have been. And I really learned that it's not necessarily the external beauty that gets people far, but it's someone who shows and owns their own individual personalities and someone who is genuine and is, and is proud of who they are and stands by their thoughts and stands by their style and, and owns it with confidence. And actually the last one that I like to hear just, just rings in my ears nicely is, to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance, uh, said by Oscar Wilde. And I just think it, this quote is really poetic and it just proves that once you start appreciating yourself and reassuring yourself, motivating yourself, you're only constantly improving yourself. And this love affair can continue as long as you want until the day you die. And once you learn to truly love yourself, then you can start to learn to love the people around you. And that cycle is, is limitless. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing those amazing quotes. You know, I love all of them. It really does represent self-confidence, especially learning to love yourself, especially, you know, being in the Philippines, you've already been there for a couple of years, you know, how the standard of beauty there is insane, right? I mean, there's every like whitening cream and on earth <laughs> in the Philippines. That's true. And you know, and I stand by not, not taking part of that, actually, no cosmetic surgery or never tainting my skin. Um, 
I know a lot of girls do do it, and I, I never, I'm not against anything. Anything that really helps you strengthen your self, self-confidence, I completely agree with. But I also believe in embracing who you are and learning to love the skin that you're in and being content with that. So, Yeah, you know, I totally agree. You know, I'm, I also love just being in my own skin, even if there's like, if I have a pimple on my face, I have a pimple on my face. You know, it's not the end of the world. And we just have to learn to love ourselves regardless, you know, our strengths and flaws. So thanks for sharing those amazing quotes. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? I think as cliche as it may sound, it really just starts with believing in yourself. And once you start to really learn and truly understand your personal potential and your capacity for greatness, which is limitless, the rest of the magic will follow after. I mean, nothing happens overnight, but just creating this energy alone is definitely the step in the right direction. And to keep this positive attitude will only progress you farther and farther and farther. And and if you do this, you're just going to constantly impress yourself and overcome your own obstacles and you're going to want to push yourself and see how much farther you can go after that. So just keep going and never stop and the sky's the limit. I love it. And you know, I don't think it's cliche. I think it's a great reminder for everyone that we always have to believe in ourselves. You know, anything we want to do in life, it does have to start with us. And I think the more, you know, our listeners hear it, you know, the more they can realize it does really start with themselves and just go out there and just take action. So love the definition that you have. And Christy, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Actually, like I said before, I, I'm, ex- I'm an extreme tomboy. I've always been growing up. I've always loved sports and all this jazz. Uh, when I was in high school, they used to call me a bunch of names. They used to say, I, I, I was really lanky and awkward, so they used to call me Betty Spaghetti, Bugs Bunny, names like Oak Tree, like <laughs> you, you can imagine. But later when I came into high school, I started coming up to my own. They started to call me Palm Tree and the nicer things, but even after high school, I was still feeling a lot of prolonged teenage angst, and I wasn't sure in which direction I was going in life. I was slowly losing hope in, in the world and in humanity and in myself, and I was exper- experiencing the pressures of feeling like I wasn't good enough for like love or for my family. I was extremely self-doubting and confused, and I think this is pretty normal for, for most women to go through at some phase in their lives. but. Once you stop wasting time dwelling in these negative thoughts and you start to look past and beyond them, um, your aura will completely change, uh, just as mine did. So, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, and it's something we all go through, right? You know, the media has this like standard of beauty, and it's like if we don't look like that, it's like then it, that's then we're not beautiful, or we don't feel like we're beautiful. And you know, it's funny that you mentioned too, like you were a tomboy and you were lanky and awkward when you were as a kid, because you know the first you know Asian supermodel, she was the same. People thought she wasn't beautiful. She was too tall, you know, she was, you know, the same thing. And, and now she's like on the top of like Forbes top five most, most earning uh, models, I think. And, you know, just, it. yeah, <laughs> you know, it just goes to show like your past doesn't have to be, you know, your, your current situation. And, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized you can go out there and be the person that you are today? What was that aha moment? My aha moment, uh, I would probably be going to my first Burning Man in 2012 which is a, not a festival, but it's a community taking place in the middle of the desert in Nevada, for, for those of you who don't know. But um, like I said before that, I had been feeling a little down about who I was and my surroundings. And it was definitely an, an epiphany moment where I, I understood like the gift of, of community and equality between humanity and of loving one another and, of course, loving oneself and this mission to inspire and to motivate one another to contribute to this this better world that, that the world has a potential to be. And I knew then that I wanted to be a part of this big message and this movement. And I also realized, though, that it really does begin with you and, and with, what, with what you believe. It all starts there. And what you really need to start believing is, is in yourself. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I, I believe as well, too, just, you know, being, if you want to be that change you want to see in the world, it does have to start with you. You know, you have to really, like, work and dig deep inside of you to realize that you have what it takes to change the world. And sometimes it just takes one person to make a huge difference. And, you know, some people might not see that, right? They might think, well, who am I to go out there and change the world? I'm just, you know, Bob or Mary or whoever, but really like you're here for a purpose. And whether it's to, you know, go and and live the life that you want to inspire others, it's possible. So, you know, I'm glad you're able to um, go out there and also spread this like positive message out there. And, you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like now? Actually, I had another realization moment that that does affect who I am today and actually made me mature and progress into 
into more of the woman I am today. And that would be after winning one of the, the Miss Philippines crowns. Because people might consider pageantry easy or or a joke or even demeaning or objectifying. But like I said, we take it very seriously in my country and we do it only with the most positive intentions and we do it to inspire and to motivate. But myself and a lot of girls who had sacrificed, it's, we have sacrificed a lot for the chance to be in the position I was given and, and the opportunity to inspire and to touch and to help an, an entire nation, even if it was just with, with a smile. And it takes a lot of humility and charisma to do what we do. And we're given a, a voice and a platform to, to spread our advocacies and to spread positive energy and positive messages. And, and the beauty about what I did is while I was being a beauty queen, I was still also being myself, which is a tomboy. So, so tomboys out there, I want you to know if you wanted to be a beauty queen, you can do it too. And I really learned to believe in myself and who I am and embrace the skin I'm in. And, and this internal energy that you harvest, it's so powerful. And I, and I promise you and all the listeners that it works 99.9% .9 of the time. After my discovery, I think I'm forever, I'm forever learning and I'm forever growing and, and discovering more about myself. But the transformation I've made since, since my teenage years, I can definitely say I'm a much stronger, better woman now, now that I've learned and understood my own potential. And now I'm just constantly looking for the next way to upgrade myself or more ways to improve and impress myself. And I like to promote this type of energy with the people around me to remove their personal doubts, to take that leap of faith, to inspire them to chase their dreams and, and to continue to try to be better versions of themselves. Thanks for sharing that, Christy. And, you know, I love that you mentioned how beauty pageants can be, you know, something that's good, especially creating a platform to spread the message. Because, you know, I've, I've also interviewed like past ladies who've been in pageants and, you know, all of them who I've interviewed, they use it for, for good, right? To spread awareness, to spread empowerment, to spread, you know, positive messages out there. And, you know, it, it's sad sometimes people see it as something as just something superficial when it really it's out, you know, the, the, the main intention is really to promote self-confidence, to promote that you are beautiful, you can go out there and be who you want to be. And, you know, there's just so much more hidden, hidden meanings towards it. So I'm glad you're out there, you know, and especially the Philippines, who takes it really seriously because it's also my home country, I'm just spreading like good, good awareness and positive energy out there. And, you know, so the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Believe in yourself. It's something I've said before, but I stand by it. I stand my ground very firmly about this because it really works. And uh, just know you have the capacity to be great. Uh, you just need to believe in it and take whatever steps you might need to take toward that greatness and do what makes you happy, smile, and, and just believe in yourself. And confidence is key. You know, it's not always the most beautiful girls, quote unquote, that win these beauty competitions. It's, it's someone who is genuine. It's, it's someone who's charismatic, someone, someone that carries themselves with class, but most importantly, someone who carries himself with, with confidence, with true confidence. And because confidence is, is what's beautiful. And now I'm not trying to give advice to the, to the listeners on how to win a beauty pageant, but this is just advice to take and to apply to everyday life. Any, any performance, a job interview, a conversation, an interaction, a first date, the way that you look at yourself in the mirror or the way that you walk into the room, just, just, just have confidence and believe in yourself. Make sense of the stars inside you and find your inner confidence and just naturally let that confidence shine. I love that. The, those are great advice. And it's true, right? It, it really does have to start with you and knowing that you are beautiful, no matter what happens, right? When you can realize that, you know, you're beautiful, regardless of anyone's approval, that's when I think the true magic happens and that confidence bring comes out of you. And, you know, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, sure. You can, of course, follow my Instagram. I'm pretty active. I'm a very visual person and I like to travel. So my Instagram is delicacy, but it's spelled very different. It's more spelled like delicaxi. So D-E-L-I-C-A-X-I. -E and if you wanted to follow my pageant fan page, or, uh, it's not only for my pageant, but just my, my, my social fan page, it's facebook.com slash Christy Lynn, Ashley Lynn, Judah McGarry. I know it's a long name. Filipinos tend to do that. Sorry, but uh, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-L-Y-N-N-A-S-H-L-E-Y-L-A-N-D-R-I-T-O-M-C-G-A-R-R-Y. Sorry so long, but yeah. 
Awesome. I'm sure I'll share the link somewhere. So <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll share the link so the listeners will be able to check out your Facebook page and Instagram accounts. So if you want to connect with Christy, you can also head on over to the Tao of Self-Confidence dot com and search for Christy's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really just want to thank Christy, you know, for taking the time to share her story and journey with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Christy. Hey, Sheena, thanks so much. I, I really, really love what you're doing. I'd love to be a part of this movement. I'm all about, like I said, female empowerment and, and sharing, sharing the message of how to, if any, any way to help to make women more self-confident about themselves. It's all, it's all I'm about because I, I went through this journey myself like we've talked about. So you're, you have the capacity to be great women out there. So keep listening to Sheena because this, this channel is awesome. Thank you so much. And it was an honor having you on as well, Christy. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll catch you later. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.